Thank you very much, everybody. Um, hopefully, we can uh, get going shortly. This is, uh, we only have 15 minutes and less for this interview. So uh, just quickly to say who I am, Mike Wilkins. I'm the executive director for the Center for Climate Finance and Investment at Imperial College Business School. Uh, and I'm here doing this interview with uh, Marlena Oberheider, who is the lead for ESG and ethics at One Trust. Hello, Marlena. Hi. Hi. So um, we're going to get straight into the topic of the importance of data uh, in ESG reporting. And uh, first of all, I don't know how many of you here were in the session this morning um, with uh, Ria Marie Thomas uh, we're talking about uh, uh, green finance, uh, amongst other things, and uh, investments uh, in the asset management side. But one of the um, uh, things that she mentioned uh, in response to a question was about uh, standardization of ESG data and how that was, uh, you know, that was required or not, as the case may be, uh, for ESG investing. And uh, she came out with a, with a comment about uh, swimming in e to work in ESG data because there's so much of it around. And she made the analogy, which I thought was an interesting one, about how the, the city has relied on equity analysts using a variety of sources of data for their reports and recommendations for stocks. Uh, and nobody really questions that so much. But when it comes down to ESG data, there's a whole sort of uh, panoply of, of, of criticism about lack of standardization and quality of data uh, and so on. So I'm just wondering, uh, Marlena, uh, from your point of view, um, what's your view on that? Are, are we swimming in ESG data? <laughs> yeah, I think we, we very much are. And I think um, it, it's such a good analogy to say, OK, we're swimming to work in ESG data because mm. that's exactly um, what I see in the companies I talk to. And I think um, also a big issue for loads of companies because there is so much data. Um, there is a bit of confusion around what do we actually have to gather? What do we have to report? How do we analyse that data? What, how do we compare the data that, we, um, that, we've, that we've collected? And um, it is definitely a challenge. And um, I think the whole question around do we need standardisation, yes, I know, um, is also a very interesting question that sort of goes both ways because if there is too much standardisation, of course, there's a risk of forcing organisations down a certain path that might not be relevant for that organisation It might be wrong for that organisation because um, ESG can be very unique or should be mm. very unique mm. to the different organisations. But at the same time, with the lack of standardisation, loads of organisations don't really know where to start, what data to gather, what to look out for, and they're sort of mm. lacking that sort of guidance which um, standardisation could provide. So definitely an interesting um, area. Yeah, and interesting about how things have evolved. I mean, I used to work for S&P Global Ratings and also in that role um, as a sustainable finance research head, also was a member of the TCFD. Uh, the Task Force for Climate-Related Financial Disclosures. I'm sure you all knew what TCFD stood for. Um, <laughs> I saw firsthand through my um, involvement in TCFD how you know the whole standardisation of climate reporting, uh, if, you know, came to be so important and has been embraced largely uh, by the corporate and financial institution community. Do you see things like the TCFD and other initiatives, such as the new ISSB? Uh, reporting standards as being critical for this? Um, I definitely see them as as um, a helpful mechanism for organisations, right? As some mm. sort of, um, not the North Star, but something mm. to, to look at and to get some guidance, get an idea um, for what to collect, what is, what is relevant, right, mm. from a broader, not just sustainability, not just the environment, but the broader um, ESG mm. spectrum as well. So I definitely see them as, as a great tool in that mm -hmm. sense um, to provide a bit of guidance but at the same time I think it's very important that organizations mm -hmm. because we don't have that standardization yeah. just yet um, look above and beyond those frameworks and see okay what else do we maybe want to look at look at as an organization is it only that data set that is requested mm -hmm. under that framework or is there other things that we can do that we want to do as an organization that we can impact um, so yeah I think it's a good starting yeah. point but it shouldn't be the only thing. But that begs the question, you know, how long is a piece of string? Because if you allow uh, companies to decide themselves on what they should be reporting and what data should be fed into that reporting, where, where do you draw it to a close? Where do you draw the parameters? Yeah, and I think that's, that's a big question. And that's yeah. luckily not one I, <laughs> I get to yeah. decide. But um, yeah, I think right, the, the question is, 
for most organizations, what's the data that we already have? Yeah. What can we report today? What insights mm. can we generate relatively easy without mm. having a full team mm. spending months and months and just collecting data, analyzing mm. it? Um, and then what else do we have to do? What else should we be doing? Yeah, which again begs the question about the usefulness of, of the data being reported. And again, going back to my involvement in TCFD, it was all about making sure that the uh, disclosure was helpful for decision making by analysts and lenders and uh, and, and and investors. Uh, so that it was aimed at the financial community, especially. How how in your role have you seen the data actually being used? Uh, and what do you think is the most important uses of, of ESG data? Mm, very good question. I think uh, coming back to that analogy from earlier, swimming in, in ESG data, right? We yeah. also don't want to drown in ESG data because mm. it is all about putting that data into context, right? Making mm. that data useful because I can just gather data just because I can, just mm. because I don't know, I think it might be useful. But without context yeah. and without an analyzing, understanding mm. that data, it's all just mm. empty data to some degree. So, what I see is where companies struggle, um, in my experience, is putting that data into context and giving that that data something to relate it to, and maybe even compare it to compare it to peers, have benchmarking, etc. Mm. Um, Can you give an example, perhaps, of what you mean by that? Um, sure. So if I if I um, start calculating my scope one, two, and three emissions, for example, mm. right, I, I get a number at the end of the day. Um, but how do I understand as an organization, um, do I do well, do I not do well? Um, I think if I have the ability to compare myself to peers, to compare myself to other organizations who've gone through the same process, who've come up with um, their own scope one, two, and three, I can then start to see, okay, how do I how do I do in comparison? Yeah. So giving it that context is, is very important. And there's also the feedback I get from my customers um, to not just have these empty data mm. points, but giving them a context and then analyzing what do we need to do to improve our data or improve our results? Yeah. The other thing I was going to ask you about um, is about quality of data uh, and sourcing because, you know, the old adage, garbage in, garbage out. Uh, and there's been a lot of criticism around about the, the quality and reliability uh, of ESG data. And, and I know, you know, from my previous job at S&P, that was one of the greatest issues that was being faced is, you know, the reliability of, of different sources. How do you see that problem being tackled, or is it indeed a problem? Yeah, I think it is it is a massive problem, and yeah. it sort of comes back to the point of we're almost drowning in that data, yeah. and organizations tend to just collect some sort of data, any data, just mm. to do it mm -hmm. for the sake of it, which kind of defeats the purpose, right? Because I need to have meaningful data, and I need to make the whole process of, of collecting mm. it. First of all, I need to understand what do I need, what is meaningful data, what mm. data do I really need for my analysis for my reports but then also the whole process of collecting it because mm. we don't want the business to get to a point where like oh god another survey i need to fill out another yeah. someone else asking me for that i only filled this out like two weeks ago why yeah. do i have to do it again yeah. so to make this as as automated as possible right to, yeah. to use technology to our advantage in that case and also get move away from that point where esg professionals or sustainability professionals spent months just on mm. creating reports right mm. that again that sort of defeats the purpose we're not here to create paper and yeah. nice looking reports we're here to do something yeah and yeah. um yeah and you know we, we, we're seeing a, an increasing drive to compliance style reporting i mean yesterday's announcement by the sec around um disclosures being forced uh well forced is the wrong word uh, you know recommended uh on on u.s corporates and institutions around uh, carbon emissions as well as physical impacts of climate change H how do you see compliance requirements actually driving this uh debate forward is it going to lead to harmonization and an improvement or is it going to just cause more problems mm. Very good question. Um, I think, first of all, I definitely see sort of that more structured approach and auditability um, coming down the line. And that's why it's also important to be prepared for that, right? To, to know how do we collect the data? How do we make the calculations? How do we run the analysis? Can we make this available to auditors, for example, if we had mm. to? Um, well, I think personally, I, I do think that sort of the, um, the compliance side will push it more towards standardization and making it auditable, making it repeatable, making it comparable. Um, yeah, I think personally, mm. I definitely see that trend on the horizon. Yeah, I mean, apparently there's around 206 regulators currently looking at ESG as a regulatory scope. Um, so, you know, 
this can open up a whole Pandora's box, can't it? I mean, we're, we're hearing more and more about uh, climate litigation and sustainability litigation. So can do you think the, the data availability is going to be, you know, lead to even more scope for litigation in the forward in terms of non-compliance? Possibly, yeah, because of course, if where there's data, then yeah. I have visibility, and that, that opens room for for litigation yeah. as well. Um, but again, that that goes both ways, right? I can by having data and by creating visibility, I can also build trust, right? I can yeah. use that the other way to to show what am I doing as an organisation, where do we stand? Also, show that I understand maybe the weaknesses of the organisation, show what we're doing to overcome those weaknesses, and um, yeah, and really make that visible. And I think. Trust is, is such an important topic these days, right? Mm. It's it's important to have that trust with stakeholders mm. across the board, not just shareholders or from, from the financial mm. side, customers, um, employees. I think earlier the last mm. panel, the last question was around um, how can we how can we get talent mm. into the organization and trust plays an important role. And ESG reporting to me is, is a big pillar of that because people these days have their own values. They bring these values to work and sustainability um, all those things mm. are a big part of that. So, um, yeah, I yeah. think the role of, of the ESG data and the ESG reporting in building trust with stakeholders is something uh, that should not be forgotten either. Yeah. I like the way you bring the word trust into your answer there for working for one trust. Very clever. <laughs> uh, do we have any questions? Uh, I know that some may have been submitted uh, before we wrap up. Yes, there's a, a question over there. I'm not sure if it's... Yeah. What about what, what about social impacts? So human rights yeah. issues, etc. This is a an area I'm seeing as hugely growing in importance and in regulation. But we tend to talk about saving the planet, not mm. people. Um, just like to get your views on that, really. <laughs> yep. Do you want to yeah. tackle that one? Um, I think it's a very good question. I think it's definitely something I see as well. Right. The the environment it is all over the news. It is something that companies can do relatively easy um, and it's also very nice to be um, vocal about this as an organization but the social side is often forgotten I think we see a lot of movement um, especially on the supply chain side right with um, in Germany we've seen the due diligence act the European Union is talking about it um, there is more movement or more pressure on organizations to look at their suppliers look at human rights issues um, and I think we do these, we do see these things in organisations as well, especially a bit more. I think bottom up, coming from employees, putting that pressure on the organisation, bringing their values to work, and um, and enforcing it. But I, I do agree, it is also a bit harder maybe to capture, see the impact of what do organisations do, how does that impact your right, your brand reputation, your value. Um, so yeah, definitely important topic. Um, there is again, there's loads of data on out there on this, but it is a bit harder to analyse. It is harder to capture. So definitely a challenge I see as well. Yeah, indeed. Any other questions? No. Oh, this one there. Just to say, ESG and sustainability, and from point of view of strategy of sustainability and um, it's a, a lots of movement now lots of trending going to ESG and forgetting about sustainability can you explain is there any difference between sustainability as a whole company strategy and is um, ESG reporting especially from the point of small business mm. Mm. That's a good question. That is a very good <laughs> question that is such a big question as well. Um, it, yeah, other yeah, terms it, interchangeable, I suppose. Yeah, that that's the yeah. thing, right? And I think it's also a bit of the, especially for small organisations, right? The the definitions, yeah. ESG is such a broad term. It means different things to different organisations. I think, to me personally, almost is, is really a personal opinion, is that sustainability is a part of ESG because as we just heard, there's the social side, the yeah. governance side. Uh, it ties back into risk management, which is a whole other can of worms. Um, yeah, I think to me sustainability is is part of ESG and should be seen in the in the broader context, also from a strategic point of view. Great, thank you for tackling that question, a really broad one. <laughs> so um, the next panel is going to be um, uh, moderated by Anthony Hobley from the Mission Possible, uh, and uh, it's on the topic of um, tackling Scope Three uh, in supply chains, the hidden 
green credentials. Great, uh, great title there. But uh, before we uh, depart, I just want to say a big thank you to, to Marlene for answering those questions and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you.